Gathered here tonight to interview a professional surfboard shaper at Shaper Studios here in San Diego, California. Donald Brink is a shaper of asymmetrical surf craft. He has a wife and two kids. He lives near the beach in San Clemente. He lives a great life. Please join me in welcoming Donald Brink. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, dude? <laughs> Lots and lots to talk about tonight. If I'm not mistaken, your first experience in America was actually touring up and down the East Coast with a Christian rock band. Absolutely. <laughs> but I was building surfboards on the side and earning a spot to learn back in Cape Town, South Africa. Big hats off to both Robin Fletcher Evans and David Van Ginkel of DVG Shapes. Like those guys let me watch them doing what they did. The, the music and the surfing, and so they gave me an opportunity like, hey, we're going to the States, you want to come? So I was like, sure. Yeah, that was my introduction to the United States. We landed in Miami and we played every other night with Christian surfers all the way to New York yeah. for two months. It got me traveling, but um, my eyes were more than just music. It was production, design, surfing, surfboards. I always wonder where a surfboard shaper really, really starts taking it seriously or gets inspired. I didn't grow up at the beach, so when I moved to the beach, I was like 15 years old, but all I wanted to do was surf because we had vacation there. But mm -hmm. So anyway, I got a wetsuit before we arrived, but I, I hit the ground running, and we lived in this up on a mountain in this small little cove, and the waves were terrible. And I didn't know there was onshore, offshore. I was just stoked. I was out there every yeah. day figuring it out. So it didn't take too long before I met another guy, and he happened to only come down on the best days, and I was like, wow, that guy just times it right. <laughs> so I started to meet these other guys, and then once you got to know him well enough, I was like, hey, can I try your board? And the first time I rode a different board than the first one that got given to me, I was like, whoa, this is a whole different sensation. Mm -hmm. So that's where the, my fascination for how things are built and why they work has always been within me, because I grew up doing a lot of artwork, and started painting at a young age and I, I, I want to figure it out so that's my personality and my nature coming back to music I was giving guitar lessons to like some groms and um, he found a broken longboard at the beach and uh, I don't know why but he like the deck was ripped off and he and he hit it with a hammer and, like foam soft and I don't know it was just, he was just a grum and I saw it and I was like oh, oh no <laughs> <laughs> but didn't have a longboard yeah so I saw that with like Oh my gosh, this is a potential. I'm going to get this board in the water. Uh -huh. So I fixed that board and eventually got it in the water. And that's how I learned ding repair. And I, 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 I learned, okay, wait, there's resin and cloth. The surfboard industry in back home, especially back then, was very small. There was, there was limited exposure and experience. Mm -hmm. And it led me on a path to sort out who was doing it right and who was going to let me play along and watch and learn and listen. Uh -huh. And uh, music, I then took a gig playing drums in a band in Jeffreys Bay just because mm -hmm. I wanted to go to Jeffreys Bay and I knew I'd learn and I'd get to surf there so I did that uh -huh. but yeah that surfboard fascination ran very deep trying to figure out how the experience for somebody else can be improved by design. Right now a lot of people in this room are curious about asymmetrical surfboards. Yes. There are a lot of people throughout the world that are curious about asymmetrical surfboards. What was the moment that made you think like this is not a curiosity anymore I'm not just tinkering around Sure. I'm really dedicating a lot of my design time to this. The very first asymmetrical I did make, which was, uh, I don't know, about seven years ago now, what had happened was I was getting just really good exposure to a lot more retro boards than I was used to surfing at home. And I love twin fins. And so somebody lent me a really good fish, Gary Larson, was a Hobie fish. And it was the first time I rode a full on fish. And I was like, wow, it really fit the waves well. As fun as the fish was and everything, it was just like, is it possible to ride a backside for somebody of my ability? How can I make it better from heel side to toe side? Mm -hmm. Well, that's all surfboard shaping is. It's everything happens because you decided on it. I was just willing to be wrong when I made those decisions. Mm -hmm. But there were enough of those right in the beginning to go, Hey, what, hey, hang on a minute, and, mm -hmm. it, and, it, and it opened up a pathway forward. You're part of a really interesting thing in surfing. You, you, you have a relationship with a clothing and wetsuit brand called Visla, which doesn't just sponsor professional surfers, they actually sponsor shapers like yourself. Yes. What was that like when you got that first call? And I was shaping, and, and I shaped with headphones on, just to cut the noise out, you know, so, but the phone rings through. And I was on the phone going, sheesh, all these <laughs> all this investment of time and commitment, it might be appreciated, but mm -hmm. more than anything, I was excited not because of getting a sticker on my board. It was more like, hey, I might be able to keep doing what I'm doing because somebody appreciates it. You have a lot of people that you make boards for in San Clemente and all over the world. 
What's the specific feedback that you kind of hear over and over? I get really excited about it because it's um, the most consistent feedback. Man, I just can't believe how this board's working on my backside. Now, what I've taken away from that is I changed the board because of the way your feet are sitting and yeah. on your heel rail toro. So I don't think the boards feel bad on the toe side. It's just they're so refreshing on the heels. So yes, it's, there's a quicker response, but there's also a promoted forgiveness. I often design a board around somebody's reference. And I don't copy the board, but if we talk about what's frustrating on that board when you ride it, then we can design around. Now, that board then came back with feedback while I was like, wow. This board's great, we designed it against the experience from that, but you've got an improved response on your backhand. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's the jazz. When you go to create a new asymmetrical board for anyone who orders one, what is the first thing you look at? What's the second? What's the third? Everything needs to work um, cohesively. If I was put in a margin saying, okay, we're only letting you change one thing, I would probably only move a fin. And if I had to change two things, I would move a fin and explode a rail. Because the middle of your foot, your pivotal reference is your ankle, which is not in the middle. So for this, th this would be for a regular footed surfer and their toe would be on this side of the deck and their heel would be over here? Absolutely. Uh -huh. So it's not over your ankle, it's closer toward your ankle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, layman's terms, I'd make it bigger, the heel side rail, because mm -hmm. I want the board to sink later because you're heavier. You can uh, keep adding weights on your heels, but you can't take it away because you don't have feet behind you. So your pivotal reference is muted, but instead of saying we're going to put a bigger rail on, you move the apex up. So if your rail were faceted, you just move the apex up and it makes the same flavor of rail, mm -hmm. but bigger. Huh. I'm making it less sensitive. It. Uh, yeah. Really? So if, there's a, if, you, if you've got a 1984 flat deck down rail thruster, I'm not going to go and put a pinched rail on the one say so I'm going to maintain an 80, 90 flat, 1984 flat deck thruster, but just one maybe for a guy that's 40 pounds on your heels mm. and one that's your weight or maybe even a touch less on your toes to promote sensitivity. So when you make a surfboard, you want the thing to work, incorporate hydrodynamic principles, but be forgiving enough for you to have fun, but excellent enough for you to win a heat, just globally, generally speaking. So they dumb down your toe to match your heel, which needs help. I'm saying, well, let's help your heel more and make your toe even more sensitive. I feel like seven or eight very subtle changes that have a cause and effect on each other mm -hmm. create a cohesive board that's now of benefit and improvement in design. Mm. I'll run through them quickly. So I definitely, more pinched rail on the toe than the heel. Mm -hmm. Move your, doesn't matter what it is, quad, twin, single fin, move the reference of your fin system and bottom contour dynamics toward the heel <coughs> and ankle. Mm -hmm. People always say is the longer rail on the toe or the shorter rail on the heel. I wouldn't say I made this one longer, I just definitely made this one shorter. <laughs> no, no, that's important. That's like, if, that is important. Yeah, so if your 510 dumpster diver we are talking about earlier is your favorite, I'm not going to now give you a 511. Yeah. I'll just maintain that at 510 because I don't want to make the toe side feel weird because we love it. It's, that's our easiest suit uh -huh. but on the heel if I made the board feel a little bit smaller when it came around it was more responsive mm -hmm. I've maybe gone to a five eight and a half for that so there's your discrepancy in your length factor mm -hmm. pause and effect you lengthen that you shorten this rail the board comes around sooner but it's also going to feel less forgiving in your bite rail sooner your dig rail on your heel so that's where I'm promoting the forgiveness so I've got a shorter rail so my plan shape needs quicker time to change its curve which lets me turn the corner longer Mm -hmm. So I turn the corner quicker, which is right between where my feet are, and then I come into a very parallel reference, and this I'll do on any board. And if you're surfing on your backhand, and you can dig rail less, and hold a higher line, you're going to be stoked. We have a stage hand to come Oh, I love this. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> so this is a step up board for bigger waves. Yeah, so this is like a, this is a goofy foot model. <laughs> Dink. Very subtle. Feel this rail? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, now quote the percentage difference so. to that one. Let me get it with the same grip. Okay. Oh, man. So it's not a country mile, and they're both soft ping pong, like little ping pong ball this for is giving very, rails. Very, very subtle. Very subtle, but you see the difference? Yeah. And then I've also shaped in an arch of where the foot's going, all that stuff. But mm -hmm. if you notice, go back this way, the blank canvas. Yeah, that's looking good on camera. <laughs> now, I want to make sure the outline showing. So, toe side, it's a step up. It's, you know, curving continuously, a little tight pin. You're going to paddle into a 
decent wave. You better make this one on the drop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but this side, it's a lot straighter. But oh. if you try to drag the drop on your toes with a straighter rail, you're going to battle to fit in. You're not going to be riding retro stuff in big hollow surf. Mm -hmm. Unless you're Bryce Young or Derek Disney. <laughs> okay. Yes, yeah, those guys are amazing. <laughs> so that's why and that's how. Okay. And then I promoted a change here. But why? It's so that I can keep this straighter for longer. So that's how I approach a board. If I'm going to make a change, it's why am I getting a benefit from that change? And then how do I not let that change throw everything else mm -hmm. off? You know, so I think five or six, seven, eight, ten little things. I mean, that's a quarter wrench. That's only, that's three eighths. Mm -hmm. The rails, an eighth. They're little things. And then I'm twisting rockers and it's subtle stuff, subtle stuff. And how do I know when to start and stop is when I shape him, I'm looking. I'm looking at the physical curve. How long do you think it will be before these subtle asymmetries permeate their way through everyone who's making surfboards? Do you think that will happen? It won't happen until the guy that can program this who's probably earning bigger money programming <laughs> rockets. There's a lot going in, but if a company does do it, and it's gonna come, I don't know that they're gonna be doing the things I'm doing. Because the twisted rocker mm -hmm. and the changing on the rail, that's all fine, but how do you, okay, this is a, what's a six, two and a half? Okay, or oh, you want a 5.11 as well? You can't explode those views because you're dealing with a long proportion. It's a compound curve, you're going, Downhill and around the corner. Can you tell us really quick about how and why you're twisting the rocker? So your favorite board's going to paddle the best, right? Mm -hmm. So that's a flat rocket board, but it'll pull. So if I'm always trying to make a board that feels better more often, I'm going to flatten the rocker. The only reason I can flatten the rocker is I'll know that if I put more rocker in on the toe, so twist it toward my toe, I can lean into the curve. Mm -hmm. If I put more on the heel, I can lean into the curve there. So when I'm going to feel the rocker, I put it there. So flat for entry and it's twist for when you're on rail. Is your surfing is on rail. Uh -huh. Are you on your toe rail or your heel rail? You can't be on both of them at the same time. So that's how and why I can be brave when I'm making these decisions. Boards that have a cohesive flow to them, the elements that aren't fighting each other, those are the magic ones. That's what I want to make. That's what we should be striving for. So subtle differences do make a difference. But that core cohesiveness of the principles, if there's one bad egg, it's, it's probably not going to go for anyone. Those big things are your, what you really want to watch out for. The subtle stuff, it's not that it doesn't matter. Learning to pick out which one of those things it is, yeah. is the hard thing. Those cohesive elements are going to, that 96%, it has to be right. That last 4%, Waves are different, every one of them too. So now there's that 4% I feel is, that's where the pros are going, mm, out of these I like that one. But that 96 is core principles, you know. And the, probably the biggest thing to look and pay big attention to is your rocker. You know, if the board doesn't flow or you feel like it doesn't flow down the line like you are talking about, it's um, a rocker is king. Because that's what boards are, they're flats and straights, but really they're just complementary curves. Like when is the curve changing and how much is it changing? Well, when are you fitting into the wave and when aren't you? So surfing's not easy and um, yeah, choose the things that make it easier. We've run out of time here, you guys. This has been enormously fun just to view your thinking process and be around you. You, um, you seem to really appreciate the time that you spend in the water and the experience you have shaping boards. Really hope we get to do this again sometime. Maybe we'll yeah, do a part it. two. I'd love it. All right, Donald Brink, everyone. Thank you.